Another significant feature provided by ScalaFX, and something that we want to have in many of our graphical applications, is the ability to do animation. Now it turns out that ScalaFX has an entire package for animation, and we're not going to go into most of these. Many of these are for animating elements of the scene graph. We are instead going to pick one of these, the animation timer, and we are going to build an animation timer. Uh, we're actually going to use this apply method here to make something that could be kind of like a game and that will have the ability to draw things onto a canvas. So whereas before we used the mouse and the keyboard to interact with and change things that were directly on the scene graph, this time we want to be drawing things on our canvas and we are going to make it so that the input alters the way in which the canvas is drawn. Okay. So we'll make another little application here. This will be our animation example. I need this to extend JFX app because I know I'm going to need it. I'm going to go ahead and import the includes dot underscore and we have to set up again stage is a new jfx app dot primary stage title equals animation scene equals new scene I'll go with 600 by 600 now what I intend to do in this application is I'm going to make it so that the user can use the keyboards to move around one element that we have in here. Maybe I'll probably make it a little box. Uh, and then every time the user clicks, I'm going to create another thing that is just controlled by the computer that is basically going to make a beeline to the user and when they get close enough to the user, they go away. Okay, so that's my general uh, idea here. It's kind of like what you might have in a game. So I'm going to make this thing called a chaser. And the chaser is, it needs to have a position. Now I could use the one of our Vect2D classes that we've written previously. Actually, how about I do that? So P is a Vect2D. I will take the most recent one that we've written would be which would be in the polymorphism class or package and I think actually that's sufficient for our needs we could make it so they could move faster or slower but I'm I'm not gonna worry about that here um, okay I'm going to need to have a list of those private var chasers is a list of chaser. We're going to start off with none of them. And then as the user clicks, we will add chasers and they should move around. And then I also want to have a, you know, like I said, a little box that is moving around. And so I'm going to give it a position. We'll just start it at zero, zero. That's good enough for now. So what do we need to put inside of here? Well, I need to have a canvas because I'm going to be drawing to my canvas. Is a new canvas that will also be 600 by 600. I need to have the graphics context from inside of that. We'll import our canvas. Val GC equals canvas dot graphics context 2D. And then I want to set the root here. Actually, I'm going to set it to be, let's make a border pane. And to help illustrate some things here, I'm going to, I'll just call this border. Let's also make val border equals new border pane. I'm going to add one other thing into here, and that's a text field. 
because it will be helpful to illustrate. I'm actually not going to do anything with it functionally other than to illustrate the focus elements of this. Okay, so I have a text field, I have a canvas, I have my border, border dot B O R B R dot top equals field and border dot center equals canvas. We have enough there that at least we can run this and we can see sure enough there's a canvas in there and there's a text field at the top. Okay, so what else do we need to do inside of here? Um, well, I wanted to make it so that whenever the mouse is clicked that the uh, we create a new one of these chaser things. So let's do this is going to be part of the canvas. Canvas dot on mouse clicked. We're going to make a we need a mouse event mouse event. And this is the skull FX one. What needs to happen here? Well, I'm going to add a new chaser onto my chasers list. So this will be chasers cons equals a new chaser of a vect 2D of me dot x comma me dot y. Okay, seems reasonable. The other thing that we need to do is we need to respond to the keyboard for moving the player around and then we need to have something that does our, our animation. Uh, I'm actually going to focus first on doing the keyboard stuff, that's the stuff that we've seen before, and then we can look at how we're going to do the animation timer. So canvas dot on key pressed is a key event of and we can import that. What should happen when the key is pressed? Well, we saw previously that if I just move stuff in here, that, so for example, I could have it so it changes the value of box and moves us, you know, left, right, up, down, whatever, but then it will only respond to one key press at a time. A better way to do this is to make it so that when the key is pressed, we remember that it's pressed, and then we're also going to have something in released that keeps track of it being released. So I'm going to add four more private bars in here. One is going to be called up pressed, and of course it starts off as false, and just based on that you can probably figure out what the other three are. Down pressed, left pressed, right pressed. Okay, so these are Boolean values that are telling me whether each of these keys are pressed. And all that happens in the keyboard handler is that I have key.code match. Remember, we need to have our different cases. So I'm going to have key code dot up. If up is pressed, then up pressed equals true. Copy that, paste, paste, paste. We also have a down, a left, and a right, which should set the associated Boolean values. And so that this doesn't crash, if they hit some other key, we need to put in a default case. So that's the key pressed. We're going to have basically identical code for when they release a key. So on key released, instead of setting these to true, we're going to set them equal to false. So now we always know which keys are being held down and which ones aren't. 
and this will allow us to keep track of more than one key being pressed at a time. And the last thing I'm going to add inside of here is we're just going to start doing the setup for the animation. So we're going to use that animation timer. I'm going to make one, so timer equals animation timer. And this gets past a function that takes a long, which happens to be the time at which it's called. And let's actually, since Scala will let me do this, time rocket, there we go. And so this code is going to happen over and over and over again once we've started our timer. So I will need to make sure that I start the timer. And if I were to like put a print inside of here, uh, it would wind up being printed out. What I really need to do inside of here is make it draw my chasers and my uh, my box right there it is okay so I want to draw chasers and box inside of here so let's do GC dot well first I'm going to clear out the background so I'm going to set fill equal to color dot white and then GC dot fill rect for now I'm just gonna hard code this at 600 600 should probably actually well, let's go ahead and do this canvas dot width get its value canvas dot height get its value and then I need to set the color to something else gc dot fill equals color dot maybe I'll make the chasers red makes them seem more menacing and then I'll have another line that's very similar where I set it to color dot green and draw the the player which is the box for this I'm going to run through all of the chasers so a chaser of P in chasers I'm going to draw a little circle that is going to be centered on P. So GC dot fill oval on let's say P dot X minus five, P dot Y minus five. And the reasons for the minus fives are these are going to be 10 by 10. Once again, there's the top left corner is where it draws by default. So I subtract five and then make the thing so it's 10 pixels across and then for the player here we will have it centered at the location of box so GC dot fill rect on we'll make them then the same size box dot X minus 5 box dot Y minus 5 10 10 we can run that I have a very small little box up there. I can't move it yet. But as I do this, you can see that uh, I am indeed creating new things that are being drawn. And so that seems to work. And in fact, it's being drawn over and over and over again every time the animation timer is called. So we have this up and running. We'll come back in the next video and we'll make it so that there's actual real animation going on.